Hello, fire signs. Okay, weekly reading, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, in that order, will be time stamped as well, so you can find it in the description box and scooch to your sign. Check out your moon and your rising, because I've done one for fire, I've done a video for water, I've done one for air, done one for earth. I know. Okay, this is for the 15th of January to the 22nd. So, Aries. Almost forgot. Aries. Right, come on. What do we need to know for Aries? Sun, moon, rising, Venus. Ooh, no one else has had that one yet. That's nice. Okay, I get this. Aries, Aries, Aries. I'm going to start with this one. So you get the chariot energy. Now, the chariot's tearing along and we've got two horses. Two horses are not the same horse. I know that's like really obvious, but I think for some reason, two horses are not the same horse is a message for you this week. You're like, she's finally lost the plot. Um, you are conflicted this week and it's a bit like this. We've got Mercury retrograde still, goes direct on the 18th, but the whole week really, it's still messing around a bit with our energies. So you're gonna feel like it's love and hate, yes and no, forward and back, and you may vacillate between the two, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's an emotional energy for you this week, so it's feeling-based rather than ration-based, rational-based, thinking-based. Honestly, Mercury's messing with me so badly, my words and my metaphors are just terrible, so apologies for that in advance. Um, you're going to be flitting between the two. There's going to be some conflict. You may feel a bit emotionally out of control at times or just a bit pushed. Um, there's also a message coming in for you because we've got this Knight of Swords. And here he is running for his motorbike, old school, like 1970s, rather nice motorbike. We've got... I mean, the worrying thing is, there's a bird ahead and he's got like a crossbow on his back. I know. So if you think of like the Rider Waite Knight of Swords, he's like that. He's got a sword and he's on a horse and he's going to hit his target. And the air signs are traditionally, as the, the, the swords are, are traditionally about speaking, communicating, message, hitting its target, getting through. Okay. So just look at it that way. Something hits home. Something, it can be an email, a text, a voicemail, a conversation. It, and it could be with somebody who has, who you know. It's somebody you know. Because we've got that whole Mercury retro, retro kind of vibe going on about it. Okay. I like the, it's a message about love probably because we've got the Ten of Cups, and the Ten of Cups is a gorgeous card, and it's generally, you can see from the, the stuff on it, the whole cuddling and rainbows and unicorns and all that. Well, there's no unicorns, but it wouldn't be out of place if they threw a unicorn into that card, would it? Let's face it. Um, it's about love and the feels and feelings, and delivering that, delivering the feelings. Someone may deliver their feelings, and you may deliver your feelings, but you're going to feel a bit conflicted about it. It could be to do with work for some of you as well. If it's a job or something you find very important, um, you don't know when to deliver your message or you get an email, you get something said or there's a missive comes out. Um, one of those ones where they send the email and there's like a funny joke at the beginning and then there's something shitty in the middle and then a nice thing at the end. The nice nasty sandwich email, okay, watch out for that. Um, but I feel for most of you it's about love, okay? And to that end, I will take you a love card. I've been speaking a bit Victorian today and I don't know why. To, and to it, a love card. I know. Don't ask, I have no idea. Yay! There's something good going on here because frankly, that's all just great. And then you get abundance, which is great as well. So 
I'm trying to think which one. It, I think, yeah, it was. I did a love reading and have a look. It'll be in the description box. Uh, what's coming in for your random love reading. It was done about a week or two ago and it was about what's coming in for you in love in 2023. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and we did a, <coughs> oh God, honestly. I did a little abundance meditation or told you how to do one called um, to imagine there were loads of people kind of breaking your door down to offer you stuff. So have a look at that is what I'm trying to get my way around to if I make it that far. But this is lovely energy. Sometimes as well, abundance comes into us through the conflict of going one way or the other. Okay, let's have a, oh, hello. Let's have an oracle, oh, an oracle card for you. We get not for you. Now, you may need to establish your boundaries this week. This has come up in the February monthly readings, which haven't come out just yet, but they will be soon. Um, boundaries came up for nearly everybody, okay? So you may need to say, no, that's not for me. It doesn't mean you're saying no to the absolute thing, but there's a part of this that you're not gonna want. And sometimes saying no to something is a big yes to something else, okay? You don't always know it at the time, and that's your kind of conflict between no and yes. Please leave me a comment, Aries. And yeah, let me know how that resonates, because actually I'm quite interested by your reading. And check out the love readings are in the description box. How to join my Gemstars membership is in there too. It's all in there. Thank you, Aries. See you soon. Leo. Oh, God. Oh, Leo. You take me out of like the zodiac wheel and I can't cope. I'm like doing it in elements. They're all fire signs. Leo is next. Then what? It's you, Leo. Okay. What do we need to know? Leo, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Oh, yes. No one else has had that one. And that's your card too. Oh, that one. Ooh, Leo, strong reading this is. I wanna take another one. Well, I'll take another one when I clarify it. First off, you get the sun. This is good. It rules you and you need it. And here in the Northern Hemisphere, there's not a lot of it at the moment and Leos are not, um, I think Leos find it hard without the sun, but also this is about health, vitality, radiance, luck, good juju, all of those things coming in, okay? So this is nice. Also, it's yang energy, where the universe is gonna make something clear to you, the door is open to you, and something which probably since October time, has been hidden, obfuscated, is that the word? Where it seems showing up in different, showing up as different things, different people, different guises, but not showing up as itself. You see the wood for the trees and you see the truth of it. And that's what the sun is. It's like Plato and the myth. Have a look at Plato and the allegory of the cave. There you go. There's some homework for you, Leo. A lot of Leos, in fact, every Leo I've ever known has been a bit of a philosopher. So if you don't know it already, which loads of you will, Allegory of the Cave. Ugh, don't just come for the tarot. Right, okay. Four of Pentacles, or are you keeping your emotional purse open or closed? Sun in Capricorn, this card, and also it's emotionally a card of whether you're closed or open or somewhere. You can't be somewhere in between with this card, actually. So it's not somewhere in between. Are you open? Are you closed? You're making a decision about whether to stick with something or whether to walk away from it this week. And Mercury's still retrograde. Technically, it goes forward direct on the 18th but it doesn't, it kind of stations and then it kind of knocks around and then it kind of, 
I would say we've got a new moon in Aquarius on the 21st, which is your opposite sign, and that that is a good cut for you. It's a good start for you. It's a good um, clearance, okay, that Mercury is actually going to stop fiddle diddling about around that time for you. And you're going to want to move forward with distancing yourself from anything that doesn't serve you or further your cause, okay? Get the Eight of Cups, Saturn in Pisces. Now we always have the cup at the foreground of the card because you still love something about this thing, job, person, whatever it is, but you choose to distance yourself. That's what I mean. That's what the Saturn part is. This feels... And the word allergic is coming into my head and I think that's channeled. Literally, it could be that you have allergies and it's making me want to sneeze. Um, but you're feeling repelled by anything that isn't aligned to your direction, okay? I'm going to take Brian and Wendy Frude, Hearts of the Fairy Oracle, and I haven't done this for any other sign. Why did I waggle my finger? I don't know. Okay. Heart of the Fairy Oracle. Ooh. I love that card. Ooh. You get the child. Now, for some of you, when you get the child, literally, this is something to do with the child. A baby, an unborn child, something from the past. I don't know, it's a very magical card, this. Um, it's also for the child in you, and I hate to say that, in a child, but it is. I know it gives me the ick, and I don't know why. Probably loads, loads of loads of work to do there, um, but I'm just going to raise it because it does. But also, there's something very innocent and beautiful about this card. So that won't resonate with everybody, but somebody really needed to know about that child. Okay, uh, the answer is yes to your question. I know. It doesn't always come out as obvious. I know that's really important to at least one of you. Oh, Oracle card. Yeah, you get deep knowing. Now, it's a bit eclipsy, this card. So have a think back to the eclipse. Last one, I think, was in November 22. Um, and then the next one is in April the 20th or something like that. So just think back to October, November. I think there's one in October, one in November. Um, maybe one in May as well. Have a look, Google it, look at the dates. Look where you were and what you learned. You've got the owl, what are you learning? Deep, deep knowing. This is something you've been moving towards or away from, or both, for quite a while, possibly even eight weeks, eight months. This week, you get a real insight into where you need to be with it, okay? And follow your nose because you're right. Oof, Leo, that was a deep one, as the actress says to the bishop. Um, if you want any more love readings or if you want to look at your moon, your rising, there's one for fire, earth, air, water. I know, I've been busy today. Um, everything else is in the description box. Help yourself. Thank you, Leo. Sagittarius. Saggy. Okay. Ooh. Starting off with the Emperor. Now, when the Emperor comes out, Sagittarius, and it's never a question you want to ask when the Emperor comes out, but you need to. Where's the father? Who's the father? What about the father? Okay, um, it's the father of the tarot, it's divine masculine, it's number four, but it's like, and that question resonates differently for different people. Your experience of the masculine and your experience of the father 
is around this week, okay? It's around for you. It may be triggered by a relationship that you're already in or were in or sort of half in, half out. Whatever it is, what about the father? Okay. It's also the card of CEO, Divine Masculine Energy, taking control, initiation, somebody like ruling the kingdom as it were. Someone saying, well, this is gonna happen, I'm gonna do this. And they can rule with great kindness and so can you. But there's a feeling here about previous experiences with the Divine Masculine and how that is hooking into this week. Now, the other card you get, which is rather glorious, is that you get the Ace of Swords. And this is a card, as you can see, of insights. Um, it's amazing because it looks like a snail, but it's also like an Escher staircase. Love this deck, Lights Ears Tarot. You get massive insights into why things are like they are, why your history is like it is, and how it's pulling on your heartstrings today, whether this is to do with career, love, or whatever. The way you relate to the father figure, the divine masculine figure, really dictates your energy this week in a really mysterious way that I can't quite put my finger on. Um, but you do come out of well, because we've got the page of wands, which is this very Sagittarian energy of freedom and of movement. Move your body this week if you can, walking, um, I was gonna say sunning and dancing. Singing, dancing, moving. Move your body to move that energy through your body somatically, okay? Big bird flying by the window as I said that. Let's have a look at a Chuck Spezzano Enlightenment card to get to the bottom of this energy. Oh. Independence, the relationship card of independence. When is independence independence? And when is it codependence? And when is it just being downright shitty? that's going to come into it. Obviously, it's about territory. It's about owning your own territory, owning your own space, but at the same time, softening your boundaries a little because you may be a little defensive depending on how your relationship was with the father. This is a weird reading for you this week. I'm not going to lie. Mercury still retrograde. It kicks the door on its way out and it just wants to get a flashlight and go, look at this, Sagittarius. Um, I'm going to take a Brian and Wendy Fruit, Heart of the Fairy Oracle card, Brian Frine and Bendy Rood, because sometimes this gets into the parts other decks can't reach. And I feel like you're very much in that territory this week. It's good, I like it, but by God. By gum and by God. Okay. Oh dear, you get in two minds. Masculine, feminine, yes, no, restriction, freedom, all of those things. Cancerians may feature in this as well because it's like the chariot with two horses. I would say until Mercury goes direct properly, which is not until about the 25th at least, that I would stay in the confusion and have the epiphanies come in at the same time and don't try and order it because it's not that kind of energy, okay? The confusion is where the gold is. Let's have an oracle card for you. I don't normally get this much of an unusual reading, but I like it. Yeah. Now I will say that Loyal Heart popped up in the shuffle and normally I wouldn't mention it, but I need to. Um, and you get To Be Fair. Libran energy, so you might be dealing with Librans as well. Um, this is the sign of the scales, obviously weighing things up. And you're weighing things up, but not to make them equal because they're not equal. They're not going to be equal. 
not hardly anything in life is equal. We're always striving for the equality that doesn't exist. Um, if you look at nature, it tells you enough. You know, give it a bit of David Attenborough and see how you feel about things being equal. But it's a very robust week for you. And for every single star sign, boundaries are very important as well. Finding the boundary about your own independence, but not letting it turn into overactive defensiveness. <sighs> Saggy. It's all going on, but I like it. Please leave me a comment because your reading's very interesting. I want to know how it resonates. If you feel like sharing, okay? Um, any other readings or info is in the description box. Check out also, there's fire signs, water signs, air signs, and yours. <laughs> Earth signs as well, I don't know. It's confused me a lot this week. Um, so go and look at your moon, your rising, and all the other bits and bobs. <sighs> Going for a lie down. Namaste.